very good day to all of you viewers welcome to the fly high series which is finance leadership and your high performance and today we have yet another awesome guest ranga ganapati he is the head of apac business global delivery and india technology so welcome ranga it's awesome to have you as part of the show and we are all waiting and keen to learn from you and hear everything from you Hey, yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for glad to be here. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. So, Ranga, it'll be great if you can introduce yourself and tell us how it was like, you know, to becoming the head and you know leading such a large role. And what has your career journey been like? <laughs> That's like the whole life. I've got to compress it in one uh, kind of a capsule. Okay. Yeah. So let me try my best. Okay. Again. thank you all for watching this and thanks angita for leading this it's really amazing uh, to have this kind of uh, real uh, experience share we hopefully it helps a lot of people okay so, uh, i think either i don't know whether to go backwards or start from where i started anyway i'll just share who i am and then probably can go back and uh, start more details on how i got here um so currently i am uh, head of uh, ultimate pick for apac and apac uh, consists of uh, india singapore all the countries uh, within apac region includes australia and uh, also malaysia and also japan for now <clears throat> we also adding a uae to the mix so this is all uh, the business where all the business that happens here and responsible for it we are growing really well apac being apac and it has all kinds of uh, uh, ups and downs and good challenges to uh, have and uh, succeed really well and apac is the hub in the entire world so it's happy to be part of that apac business development i also manage a global delivery <coughs> which we are a, a technology service company uh, where we are like a product engineering partner for most of the digital uh, transforming companies a lot of different uh, uh, organizations so our company name is altimetric uh, it is primarily uh, an mnc us based company and owned by a uh, person raj but he is a founding chairman uh, who is still uh, as you know, like a startup here still a, a growing startup i would say and a very fast growing startup in a very a good quality of income both bottom line and uh, top line so in this particular model i also manage whole global delivery uh, which is very critical so we uh, not like a cap gemini or accenture of the world nor a just a, a, a off the road uh, organization so you are somewhere in between We specialize in some engineering uh, and digital transformation, and uh, mostly uh, people transformation, business transformation kind of a setup. So that needs uh, 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 more of a delivery-led growth. It cannot be you can just throw up some jar and people come to you. It's all like you prove to the customers. It's a delivery-led growth, right? So that's why the global delivery is very critical and important for me, uh, and that really keeps me uh, on my toes on a day-to-day. -day. then of course uh, the india technology center i'm also heading that which is uh, the critical uh, path a critical factor for ultimatric as an organization 80% of the people and the work is happening from india which is very very important <clears throat> so that's where these three is very critical one is on the business side uh, other one is on making sure the delivery which is the uh, uh, intellectual property or the secret sauce of us and that is also a, a critical path and the influencing part in the organization and third one is intelligence center which is uh, uh, very critical for the entire ultimate growth so that's the three layer i'm pretty happy and uh, i'm happy that organization is also growing in a very very good way and uh, yeah so the, the next question what you had was how i got here um, that's like uh, it's like this rajini movie right in in a song everything gets up there I wish i could do that no i i come from a very uh, simple background uh, like a typical uh, chennai uh, middle class family uh, predominantly uh, studying born brought up and grew up in chennai even my undergrad and masters i both i did it uh, in chennai very fortunate uh, i did both uh, in the best of the schools like i did my commerce i was originally a commerce grad and uh, studied in rural and the college <coughs> which uh, happened to be one of the toughest college to get in those days and then parallel i was also doing icw and ca uh, while i was doing my bcom and you know that's a package right so you got to get there into ca once you finish your bcom you want to be out there uh, uh, leading this whole accounting and strategy finance and everything but for some point in time it didn't strike me uh, that uh, is, it, is it what it is going to take me out there and what i was aspiring for since we are all from the middle class family you have a high aspiration that you want to get up there 
compete with the best uh, uh, in the uh, industry or the market or the, the social uh, group, you always have that inner hunger. So I was thinking, what will take me there? Because we didn't had my family didn't had any chartered accountant in my family. Even though I was I was doing internship also with a, a good company. Uh, I don't know what was the company which I was working for. As an internship, as soon as I completed my twelfth, there was an intern. I started B A C A B com all over. Like I was so busy because I want to get there very soon. But halfway through, I thought, no, this is going to uh, get me out there. Then uh, one of my friend, I was also studying this is before the N A T days in Chennai. It was a thing called the uh, Uptron A C L. Uh, so I did my computer science, which is beginning of the whole computer uh, thing in India, like ninety ninety one types. I joined there, and uh, that was like giving gave me a completely different uh, perspective of uh, the next level of growth in the industry that's coming, and that's when the whole globalization also forming up in India, and that was a very good break. I think I was there the right time, <clears throat> and some of my friends also influenced to get there, and while I was studying there, with my friend who was in NIT Trichy, which is now uh, uh, early as well, it was RIC Trichy. Now it is NIT Trichy. He used to visit us. So he was talking about how MCA is all about, how he learned, and how what is all his learning. And uh, then that kind of uh, got me more interested in MCA. Then I applied for MCA in CEG, United City. Then but CEG was like uh, the Taj Mahal of the uh, monument in Chennai, and everybody wanting to study there. I wrote my exam, did my counseling, and they got through. So I was very happy. Uh, so that's that's the kind of combination of the finance aspect and the technology aspect, which really helped to get the Right combination at the right time, I would say. In the meanwhile, uh, you know, just to add one more layer to what I was all doing, I was also uh, doing marketing uh, of selling computers. This is in my first year, two to three years. I used to do marketing computers, uh, primarily concept selling because uh, marketing is about concept. It's not a sales where you carry a uh, product with you. That's when there's uh, selling computers, computing solutions, and it's still all like getting into the market. Mm-hmm. I was there for one year. Then I started up my own concern. Uh, imagine I didn't even know what I was doing in my early twenties. I started my startup along with a few of my friends, and actually we were doing good. Uh, we were selling three to four computers a day when in the in the month, and that was like those days. Computer was anywhere between one point five lakhs to two lakhs. Like that was like a Rolls Royce of those days, right? So each computer we were making a decent profit for those days, those days like. All I wanted is I don't want to go in front of my father asking for money for what I want to do, right? So that was my primary, and I was wanting to pay for my uh, uh, college fees and everything. I wanted to be self-sufficient. That was my primary key. I was doing everything, so I was doing sales, marketing, and studying all this. Then over a point in time, I thought I have to focus myself. I cannot just keep keep doing everything. And I was continuing my business. Then uh, I did uh, successfully completed my uh, BCom in Viveka. Then I got it to MCA and Nine University. Uh, so I, it was an evening college, right? Uh, that was the first. I was the first batch for evening college where uh, there was sent in a UGC grant, so we had to pay the complete fees, like a 40, 50 grand per semester. It was a like, huge those days, yeah. like 92, 93, 94, right? It was pretty expensive, and I was managing, of course, that helping me, but I didn't have that. I want to do it myself. That was the primary key. Then startup went really well, and uh, in CEG everybody wanted the last year you want to get into TCS of the world or uh, those days IT was booming, right? If you are from Manila University, CEG you like you get two three jobs in your hand, you just need to pick and choose. Like Infosys was just coming up, so but I didn't go for any of the campus. I thought I have my own business. Why would I uh, join? Because I thought I can give more jobs too. You know, my own classmates, oh. and I was selling computers while I was doing MC. I was selling computers to my own college, like students, uh, uh, architecture, SAC, and uh, uh, architecture, and uh, all most of the dep- five or six departments, including my own department, the computer science department. I was selling computers. So I was like, man, I can be self-sufficient. But after a point, right, uh, very early days, we don't know. You got so much money, and uh, you're going, growing good, and anything goes so good, has to drop. So there came a situation where uh, uh, we have to. Uh, it was a very tough situation. A huge, huge lump sum that I got into credit and uh, could not get away. So that is the time uh, uh, where I thought maybe I back uh, uh, to a salary job. I joined a company called CBS, Complete Business Solutions, yes. which is the same guy whom I'm working for now, Raj Bhattacharya. <laughs> 
<laughs> mid 90s uh, that was a incidentally i used to come to cbsi for my audits you know during my uh, ca days oh okay so you also didn't see her that's nice yes, okay yes, yes yeah that's okay good. icw nit like you probably i didn't have my oh, business okay. but i think not to cover that nice that's nice that's nice yeah the cbsi i joined the since i had a, uh, when when i was selling my computers we were also uh, developing some computer uh, software packages we had a good learning about all this i was actually an additional edge when i joined cbsi because we were already developing application software development so when i joined you know for them i was in a beginner i i had an extra edge for my uh, uh, colleagues out there and uh, i could feel that i became a team leader within a year and uh, of course with that comes in in a corporate environment it's hard to uh, get that immediate limelight so people around you like who like this guy and i was pretty vocal and uh, in scores I, i lost major loss in my previous business right this business this job that i joined cbsa was to just pay the interest not even the debt right just the interest i wanted to make sure i'm able to manage uh, my day to day it was that worse situation then i, I was uh, uh, that is all aside uh, a lot of learning uh, i had college uh, a different college uh, experience uh, nine city uh, vivekananda uh, marketing experience sales experience and software development learning experience and uh, growing in that uh, globalization era you would know it, uh, it was a difficult and different situation where you ought to know what's happening otherwise you're lost Correct. with that and joining and just mnc that those those time cbsi was out there it was uh, i had offer in infosys and cbsi i took uh, cbsi because they were the pay masters i said i thought maybe additional pay extra pay can pay off my uh, uh, soon and then I, i was able to establish myself really well within two years so they offered me to go to us and then i went to us that was the startup uh, days in the us like a dot com boom was happening uh, i went there again uh, so to me i i don't uh, uh, get to a particular uh, scheme of things I, i would always wanting to learn the 360 degree mm. uh, if there is uh, uh, one thing i will try to see what are the other things that is influencing this one thing right. so that's what I was when i was in my uh, developing development uh, my own company those, those are the days like i don't know whether people will even recognize and remember those softwares called dbs 2 plus 3 plus clipper yeah. fox pro yeah. then came c c++ Correct. then java and cobol all of that was coming whenever i see something new i was always jumping onto it because i am like this kid right very curious to know or uh, learn more so when i see uh, dbs to then there's something called uh, lotus one to three came and then i jumped on to then the clipper fox pro man something i can play with it then unix c c++ i had this uh, visual and the quality uh, I, i wouldn't say i'm a great programmer but my quality of coding and uh, quality of my uh, uh, the work was i always felt i don't know whether i was able to satisfy my uh, managers but that i wanted to feel good about what i'm coding what i'm doing when i put it in a general way i would say best i wanted to at least i should feel happy about what i was doing so that kind of got me there so the simple thing one of the smallest example how i got to this us uh, opportunity was There was a, 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 my, my manager, Tanda Swami, and he is still my mentor. Uh, uh, he's uh, living in the US. He, he played a major role in my shift uh, to software. This, that's when this HTML and all that came in. So I was playing with this, so the, the visual uh, side of it, like all interface. Uh, I mean, everybody's trying to do the SQL backends, uh, backend, playing with all this uh, database, uh, data structures. i was trying to play with the user interface uh, and even in those ca cs db to the mainframe setup i was more uh, close to the cac because of front ending i want to give the good visual good presentation taking the customer perspective so that so i was uh, in a i'll uh, playing with this and this person can the same passes my cabin when he was going for lunch and he was saying ranga what are you doing i just was just playing with this uh, this is what i'm doing he saw that all uh, uh, the interface and he said this looks good can you just give me a demo he said okay i'll give just give me one more hour before you come back uh, from lunch and finish up he saw that he was very impressed then he said when i have an opportunity for you to go to us i said okay wow okay why not then they applied for my visa within 3 months i got it then 3 months fast forward i was in the us right oh. mm-hmm. so then us us gives you a complete a different perspective of uh, experience 
you know, exposure to different things which you thought you had uh, you you have certain mind thoughts of us certain map of us certain mm-hmm. visual of us you go there you see like uh, uh, no it's very different you have to take care of yourself from the beginning to end every step in your life from the time you get out of the bed then till the time you come back to bed you own up everything that goes around you mm-hmm. here in in india you get up somebody is there with you with the coffee then somebody tells you go take a shower somebody have a plate of uh, a breakfast and the day pay table for you to have it out there you may be earning money but everything the cleaning up your restrooms to be taking care of your own self uh, managing your food and uh, keeping your uh, uh, cleats or uh, clothes uh, cleaned up so and that was like very shocking to me how am i going to manage it so it was you won't believe the first few uh, months uh, whenever i go to office when i see people eating their home food you'll feel like wow how can it happen can i just ask them for a spoon of food right that's really i didn't i'm not exaggerating right. i can always go get a burger or pizza but uh, getting a home food somebody a colleague having it that is how i felt Right. then uh, the competition is different dot com was like uh, too much right so there you'll be thrown into the fire then you start learning our mm-hmm. dot com was very different uh, because everybody was learning it was a new environment new technology right. and nobody knew that new technology those days right so uh, java jj++ java++ and uh, vb docs and the visual uh, basics and all that had an interface and we also had a legacy a strong legacy applications and technologies so we need to connect the dots both uh, to bring it to the current okay. it was tough and uh, you know as i was a consultant uh, every day i'll be a different consultant today i'll be a consultant tomorrow i'll be a, a visual basic consultant third day i'll be a pro bowler a power builder you have to keep switching your hats you have to be uh, aware of everything correct and uh, support the weekend uh, we'll be studying something new coding something so that when you in front of the interview if interviewers you have to make sure you impress them to get a, another uh, opportunity it's very uh, i wouldn't say tough uh, but good challenge uh, so so yeah. that whole thing uh, converts you into different uh, uh, personal together so the, the way i would say is that gives you you throw anything at me i'll be able to manage it right. uh, whether i'm doing the best of it but i'll be able to survive and make sure you are happy so that was the criteria and so i was it's like uh, a big, uh, roller coaster ride that you've had you know wearing multiple hats one side finance one side computers and then marketing your own business and your stint in the us that does seem like a real handful of experience that you've gone through <coughs> yes uh, i think it, uh, it is and but all through the days right uh, one thing was very very clear right? so uh, i wouldn't do anything for sake of doing it right. uh, either i will love what i do or do what i love i i cannot be in between uh, initially it takes some time to understand and learn and start liking it mm-hmm. then i will ensure that i'll put my 100% on towards then that is where the whole experience comes to be was because you become completely independent you, you are dependent you are not dependent on anybody you are dependent just on yourself okay. Uh, right. anything and everything people will give you that uh, exposure only if they feel you are good at it right. because they don't want to take a chance on you for their failure right, right. so they don't have time to uh, experiment and uh, do all that stuff because they don't have time and i was in bay area which is san francisco uh, uh, silicon valley the competition is so high uh, but i was there uh, the good thing is i was going around uh, as a consultant that is one thing what you learn when any, anybody watching this if you are in the it industry or any industry for that matter the consultancy hat gives you a, a good view of uh, actually real life yes. because uh, uh, today is different than yesterday than tomorrow right so that consultancy is like you got to understand the customer you got to understand his customer mm. and you have to ensure that he understands you the three line of attraction is very very important if one misses you are kind of alienated in the whole discussion the whole exercise of the process right? right so that is very very critical and uh, so since i had this financial background i think i have got to connect this dot <clears throat> see the finance uh, and the accounting and the in cost fact, the uh, cost uh, in fact that was what i was going to ask you next so considering your finance background and now you are the business head 
So what do you think are some of the healthy practices that you follow so that you can keep their numbers in check? Oh, no, absolutely. Absolutely, right? The, you, you can always say, right, uh, like you can take an uh, uh, Indian out of uh, India. India, but not other way around. So I had this strong accounting uh, and the finance, uh, finance background right. uh, without my own knowledge, subconsciously, right? I had planned and you won't believe in the U.S., uh, during those tough days, right, you'll be having four or five credit cards, right? And uh, uh, all 0% APR, which means 0% interest. I'm talking in mid-90s and early, 90, uh, early 2000. Mm. So you'll be like juggling. Uh, one place is where you might get 2 or 3%, one place you get 0%. You'll be like uh, uh, moving, uh, uh, doing all that, uh, exchanging uh, one from one to another. And I used to have Excel sheet. Right? I always, even now, I don't know whether it is right or wrong, I have an Excel sheet yeah. and I have a mental map, right? I, I carry, okay, where is my investment, right? Yeah. What is my salary? Mm -hmm. And what is the, the, the right investment versus the and risk-taking investment? And right. the third one is, you know what? This is my passion. I'm going to try it, but I'm not expecting any success out of it. Right. If it happens, I'm happy. If it doesn't happen, I've got a good learning. So uh, I may feel like I'm just throwing money uh, at uh, my, maybe, uh, my gut feel, but no, uh, a lot of process has gone in before I spend something. I may come out uh, thinking I'm a lavish guy and all that, but I think a lot. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm spent throughout, I'm happy to spend any, uh, any human, but a lot of process has already gone in. So that, that comes in your mind, whether you, you are there or not. So that is what, U.S. gave me that domain, technical experience and uh, dealing with people and relationship, right? That's very, very important. And uh, in the U.S., uh, the major advantage, especially if you live in Bay Area, you tend to interact with the rest of the world. Uh, when I say rest of the world, you will have a, a Korean, you will have a Pakistani, you will have an Australian, you will have a British guy sitting next to you and a Desi guy and you have all, and a black guy. You have all kinds of variety. And within India, it's India is just a subtraction of so many things, right? You have somebody from Andhra, Karnataka, Bangladesh, B B Bengal, all over. And you got to work with so many people to get stuff done. It's not that easy. So that kind of uh, building relationship, uh, believing in people, trusting in, pe uh, uh, trusting in people, taking few risks, right? That I really got it from uh, being there in the global market of US. When I came back to India, of course, uh, India is a huge technology hub. One of the main reasons is, of course, uh, the global talent, right? The, the amount of talent that we have in India, uh, at least uh, 10, 15 years ago, the quality and quantity were equally good. So we, if we had 100 people, 100 people were quality-wise, they were good. Also, the quantity-wise, 100 is good. Okay. But now I, I got to talk about the imbalance also. So people come to India because they see an advantage of getting quicker people. Mm. They can get talent just like that in any talent or they can be trained very easily. It's not only availability of the existing skills. They can be trained uh, quickly and as uh, soon as possible. People are very quick in learning things. The second, uh, whether we like it or not, uh, the, the cost arbitrage is very, very important, right? You, you have a 60% saving when you're moving to India. Mm -hmm. It comes with, a, a, I wouldn't say 60, but at least 50% take because the infrastructure, the whole packaging and the time delay and all that happens, right? According to Sun model. Uh, of course, there is a level of management cost required to manage the, the remote modeling, uh, operating model. With putting all of that, you still have a 50% cost arbitrage. So when that is the uh, crux of it, you cannot take that away. You can always say, no, we cannot be that way, this and that. But uh, the, the cost of running business in India compared to US is only half of it. If not, I would say uh, one third of it. That's the cost arbitrage you get. So with that kind of a model, it is changing, by the way. It is almost becoming a uh, 50% cost in Bangalore, Pune, and to an extent even in Chennai for this case. Uh, Hyderabad, of course. So, but you got to be very careful. It's easy so since everything is coming in dollars, you, you, you cannot just lavish this spend, right? You got to make sure every dollar you spend uh, uh, has a, a, a return on investment, yeah. profit, and the people's satisfaction. But people's satisfaction is also very important because otherwise... Right. We'd be messing up with the people, then nothing would happen. Yes. So, uh, so, I work in a lot of this uh, large enterprise. Do you have something to ask, Sangeeta? Yes. No, I was saying, you know, that's a very nice takeaway for the viewers on how you are managing your 
personal finance and not you know taking a blind decision uh, and you know taking calculated risks so that was something very good so that also leads me to ask you so what would be your financial advice to business heads and entrepreneurs especially if they are looking to grow their profits yes you did mention about cost arbitrage so is there anything else that you would like to add on to it <coughs> there are various factors uh, in this particular space right there there is no uh, formula uh, uh, every industry has their own way of doing things and their own uh, influence on the market their customer and their resources right this three plays a very uh, different role maybe for textile industry it is different for automobile industry it is different retail industry is different mm. but it industry per se <coughs> which uh, is a blessing in this case for it folks are uh, they cut across all this domain so so i i work with at least 50% of my customers are all from fintech right paypal visa mastercard intuit the list of city bank dbs this goes on mm. so we understand how a fintech works then comes uh, automobile we work with uh, uh, big uh, organizations like automobile organization like ford uh, daimler chrysler fiat right we get to know a lot of the internal aspects of it the new age planning the market planning how they manage the uh, manufacturing you know the inventory management all of that so we we pretty much cut across all the industries and we also give solutions for them right uh, like uh, uh, some of the industries like number 1 number 2 also we we kind of work very closely with them in uh, making sure they may be number 1 number 2 now but if they don't take care of certain things they will lose their place right so they got to be completely closely watching on how the market is responding to them how the customer is responding to them if they miss those two they kind of uh, lost in the market you see an example like nokia for example the best example nokia and the blackberry right nobody thought nobody can replace a uh, blackberry and nokia when you're using those now we don't even know where those two brands are similarly those are like in india uh, we we used to see only the ambassadors in the road mm. right this because ambassador did not understand the customer we don't see ambassador now it has become like a legendary car we still keeping in a memory but not we still not running on the road so that, those two things are very critical the problem is also understanding the finance very very clearly see i come from a large enterprise i work in visa right visa you know the largest uh, transaction processing company in the world mm-hmm. the world's two thirds car transaction goes through visa right and there the there the problem is not the money mm. i go ask for 50 million i get i go ask for 100 million i get all they want is can you make this happen in this particular time i want this to be done that's all it is and the entire support system is out there in visa they have a proper pa uh, recruitment uh, wing they have an hr wing they have a sales wing they have a support wing they have a security wing infrastructure management everything is out there there i learned how to execute things in a timely manner uh, with, a, with, a, with a, if i have a good amount of uh, budgetary support paypal very similar paypal i joined when they were just acquired by eva in uh, 2003 2004 i was there part of the entire growth of transaction for 12 years from being an eva owned company versus paypal being the leader of the payment right i, I was there from the entire transition uh, and then now i could see paypal is literally leading the entire market very happy uh, because i was an alumni of paypal and i'm still a, a shareholder of paypal also but i could see how it was evolving Right. With, with all that learning ebay was similar ebay uh, they they lost their market because they could not understand the competition they had like with amazon before amazon ebay was the darling of the uh, whole industry mm. they worked in ebay i know how, how much of the ebay brand when i say i work for ebay people be like wow like those are the days no google no facebook right it was only ebay yes like yes. people oh wow ebay paypal those are two best things that can happen in the world and one of those is so ebay is a completely flash stock so there are certain things which we learn now fast forward i was in ebay paypal uh, visa all these larger companies where the support system is super and you just have to say what you want you get it this execution delivery is your only ownership by people you get the people get it executed but now when i joined altimetric in 2017 it was a complete flipper uh, turning around the table <clears throat> there i can demand in pay by i want 10 people in one month mm-hmm. i want otherwise i won't be able to deliver i'll put i can easily put the blame on uh, uh, the talent acquisition right. team or i would say this tool is not working mm-hmm. here first of all i am not in complete control i we are computer the mercy of our customers right okay. 
and purely ultimately was originally a, a, like a, a pure play staff augmentation company if not some projects they were doing it but it was pure play okay you would need 10 people i'll get hired and give it to you right i didn't join uh, ultimatic for that right and because i could have happily retired in paypal and ebay so when i joined ultimatic i wanted me and uh, my immediate boss was who is the ceo and i go with him long time and it's a relationship that's very important i've been working with him for the last 20 years in different mode and uh, that's how my relationship always and maintain with the people uh, i challenge him he challenges me he puts me in the hard uh, uh, places i put him in the hard i ask him all hard questions that's how we work so it was also new for him because he's also coming from a similar background it was also new for me and we were like where are we now how are you going to take this and uh, believe me we were almost uh, i thought i uh, i've lost in my uh, life literally for the first six months i don't know what am i doing here because hiring people giving it to customer hiring people giving it to, giving it to customer what am i doing here i'm just only hiring i'm like a hiring leader so why do i need all i need is a head of uh, hiring let him do the job then we we spoke and then we said uh, our ceo he's like a, he's a visionary uh, raj but he could be uh, then he was ceo then he uh, handed it over to raj sundaresan and he was you now he's a chairman he said ranga we hired you guys for not doing this that's why we hired you just change the whole flavor we have to get up there where our customer should feel we got to work with ultimate for their transformation their business growth and how can we help them so it took some time to first understand the vision very clearly <clears throat> then cost is also very important right Who, why would people join us yeah. and we are not like a huge uh, brand uh, then at least now we are we are in the great places to work in uh, we were like in top 100 now we are in the top 50 in the next week you will know where we are going to be for the last four years we are like gaining good momentum in places great places to work mm-hmm. and our glass score is like almost reached four plus and no other company has reached four plus percent uh, points so it took a while So we are thinking, how do we change it? And existing people, it is hard for them to change. Not everybody, all right? Everybody are very happy. Okay, you give give, it, give me to the customer. I'll go do my work with the customer. I'll keep him happy. Fine. That is not going to work. So we have to change the operating model, the strategy of the business. Then comes the important aspect of the cost. If you have to acquire good people, we need to invest. <clears throat> how are we going to make an investment? And are we going to just throw money at the people or create an environment? Mm. or a clear charter for them to feel that you come join us you going to be part of this growth it was a bit tough and uh, believe me first one and a half years uh, uh, we have to do a lot of uh, uh, i wouldn't say a clean up we were redressing the company right. we were like 1500 people when i joined we were re- redressing and at least half of them they did they, they could not go with our approach mm. and uh, some of them could not click it no we got to hire at least minimum 100 to 200 people a month then but we could not hire because we were in the greater brand but now fast forward <clears throat> we are hiring 300 people a month wow <clears throat> almost 250 300 and we got to hire another 1500 people a month now 1500 people we have the demand imagine we work with at least the top uh, if you take a 50 fortune we work with most of them with a very strategic work right Uh, like uh, very happy to have customers like paypal visa master all this huge brand like ford uh, they like imagine we work in a very strategic manner mm-hmm. and uh, it's a very good relationship it's a give and take and the underlying factor is we were growing top line very good uh, when i joined many they were at least showing top line great mm-hmm. but the bottom line was under the water oh. now fast forward our top line is really really getting up there uh, uh, like i would say uh, close to i don't know whether i can say share the numbers but in a very good spot and bottom line is almost 30 to 40 percent right no other company in the league is out there and uh, and the customers are so very happy and the employees are so very happy we got to make a lot of changes uh, where do we make the investment right is it going to be throwing at the infrastructure or at the people or buying uh, the softwares or marketing right because we need to create a marketing thing also <clears throat> and we will do one thing a particular day then next day you know it's not going to work because our competition is ruthless market is ruthless because nobody is going to see uh, okay it's ranga of visa or paypal or raj of visa paypal out there no it was very tough we made a little change and we have to get right leaders i think that is a very very key aspect of the trick 
we were able to attract very very strong leaders and uh, uh, and also these leaders would not join just like that these are the people very invested uh, in them and where they created a trust on us most of them came uh, for the name of me or name of our leaders and it was like a reference okay ranga is there okay let us also have these two people okay. ranga says hey can you also join us that lead, creating this leadership was very critical so ranga, and then we i'm i'm curious to know what is your style of leadership okay uh, that's a uh, i wouldn't say leadership like i said the servant leadership right i think uh, uh, i that uh, that kind of struck me very strongly mm-hmm. <clears throat> see i think the generation where we come from we are worried about our parents we are scared about our kids i think we will be the last generation we are done the next generation they 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 not they don't worry about they don't care about the parents or their own kids right and in between these we are caught the transition is going very fast right so now so these guys uh, the people whom i have very fortunate have uh, uh, the kind of leadership that they have and uh, happy that they trusted on me and the leadership that we have here and it didn't come overnight uh, that's why i was saying it didn't come overnight and uh, it was like at least most of them uh, uh, at least half of the leadership that they have been with me for last 15 to 20 years Right. and uh, we've seen them uh, we we grew together and some of them were like the junior engineers and programmers and we grew them to almost like a senior leaders now some of them were like just a project manager now they're like an architect senior architects and they've seen us working i think the leadership is you not telling them what to do right uh, uh, i don't know it's a big statement be the change is what uh, you know mr gandhi said somewhere it's there uh, you people need to feel that you are there for them if you want to do something first you prove to them you are doing it true true then they will definitely follow you okay otherwise we just preaching preaching to yeah. the choir is not going to work correct right? people want to see what is he does he have the intention believe me people always look up is many things you can fake but not your intention and your attitude right correct if people uh, uh, question you on these two the next day they will leave you and uh, and there will be ups and downs in any business and the ups and downs in people personal life it's very very critical and if you're not going to be there for them during those time then they won't be there for you absolutely i think yeah, so that's very very critical yeah so what you're saying is uh, lead by example i think that is coming out very strongly <laughs> lead by example and be there when they need you uh, mm-hmm. uh, that is i think that is very very important personally everybody goes through a chain of reaction in their mind right. professionally not every time they will be best at what they are doing right yes. how can we help them how can we guide them not that i will be perfect in everything else i am also learning from them because i cannot go back to college to learn things i am also learning from them day in day out right? the way i work is any problem that i have i don't try to solve it mm-hmm. i put it on the table to my leadership say okay guys this is the problem that we have and let me hear it from you what is you say what is that you're thinking what could go wrong what is the right thing to do what will the customer feel what will my employees feel everything is an inclusive approach mm. if you are inclusive your problem now is not your problem it's mm. their problem right they will ensure it is solved and to the extent to the last detail of the problem i've seen that it is working even now <clears throat> if you think you are up there like a god telling them what to do how to do uh, don't you can be good in certain aspect but not in every aspect of it right. you can easily fake but they will easily find you also right, right. so you need to have that open conversation mm-hmm. that that intention of being there inclusive right. and we are in this together right and if you have something good share it to them if they if they screw up or if they do something wrong a bad in certain times mm-hmm. help them and but don't hide the problems i so don't hide I, the problem i am very blunt i just tell them dude if you make a mistake don't make me the last person to know about the mistake let yeah. me be the first person yes. so that we can fix it right and then there be it a customer issue or an employee issue or any screw up right call me immediately and say ranga i made a mistake there is something wrong i need to talk okay let's talk immediately let's figure it out then i'll give a complete back if something goes out of reach then i will not be in a position to even help them so those are certain things that that i, I really uh, uh, make sure and end of the day it is a people right people are human beings it's all built with emotions and you got to be there in that emotional uh, connect as a emotional connect yeah. and with this 
any business uh, you throw me into any other business probably i'll take same set of people and run the business also because i'm sure they will learn so i'm it's the intention of getting things done right uh, uh, i think those are hope i, I was able to answer your question yes, yes, those yes. are some of the aspect that i always carry and uh, imbibe in me excellent excellent so i'm also you know that drives me to ask you how do you motivate your teams for high performance yeah <laughs> this high performance the high potential right there are two things which i normally uh, consider yeah. uh <clears throat> some of the people they are uh, high potential hmm. but doesn't have to be a high performer true and reverse also uh, some of them will be high performer but they may not be high potential correct correct so in fact internally uh, i i printed a, a map uh, for all my leadership and i have asked my leadership to also to manage that that graph actually gives you not, not a like a like a lat long of point to point uh, uh, kind of a, uh, accuracy mm. but it gives you an idea right <clears throat> i would want you to gauge a person if he is with high potential hmm. if he is not able to perform then i have some problem sure he is he can perform well but it's not uh, he is able to perform but his potential is less which means i can i have to make an investment in him so to increase his potential correct right. coach him mentor him create a leadership program or train him do all that right but the same guy if the potential is high if he is not performing there is some disconnect between him and the organization or him and me find it our conversation we understand maybe either he's not liking what he is doing or he doesn't have something that will make him challenging or to grow or he is lost in his life anything could be right so i i kind of judge that so that the high potential high performance graph is is very very important so i would always give <coughs> uh more weightage for a high performer than a high potential person right cuz uh, it's like this right you can have millions in your bank but people on the road doesn't care what you have they only care about what you give right correct so i think you might be a high potential guy but if you're not performing it doesn't make any sense so i try to bridge the gap in many ways right so uh, of course by having a regular interval of conversing with them and understanding what they like you know, uh, and what they do uh, maybe there are certain guys not performing because you have to just make a small switch maybe give them a different role like a, uh, a engineering manager he is wanting to become a product owner mm. have that conversation and oh have the openness right uh, open platform for people to share what they wanted i do a lot of things i do a skip level i first of all i have one on one with most of my directs every week right then i do skip level at least once in two weeks or three weeks mm. because my my directs will share certain things there could be something they are blind sided where they will not know what their teams are doing right the skip level then i do a team level catch up mm. like if it is a ford a team maybe a paypal team or intuit team i do a, no agenda these teams these uh, meetings i don't go with any agenda i just ask them okay tell me i'm here to uh, ask uh, uh, take any questions i'll just crack some jokes and throw some uh, the dental happenings then they slowly open up in before covid i used to do that with a lunch or a evening dinner or over a drink right so people kind of open up so, i don't I, i believe people is very important reflection of people is very very critical mm-hmm. investing in people when they open up instead of going for a survey result Uh, and uh, getting to know what's happening in glass store or through gptw they like a direct line right? right so connecting with people small groups large groups so with all this once in a quarter we kind of catch up with the leadership team and they will bring their own report about their team about how who and what then i will have my own kind of share of inputs and say okay this is what you say this is what i learned so where is the gap can you fix it then there will be some kind of a debate and uh, all conversation then okay let's understand a prioritization let's understand what is important right. prioritize and then okay then i distribute maybe a, there is a team that is getting created across the organization then i give it back to the leaders okay each one of you have to drive this initiative you take this up you run this you run this you run this so the way i have my leadership is everybody does at least three roles or they're not asking for a three salary 
three <coughs> x of salary. So they have primary, which is the delivery capability. Then the people, the, the manage the people. How many of how many are they able to grow to the next level? Or not everybody can go vertical rate. Right? How can they grow horizontally also? Multiple roles. The third aspect of it is how much are they into investing, contributing for the organization, which is the initiative. So this is what keep them engaged all the time, so that uh, they feel they're learning something new. One small thing, what I also tell them, it's a very crude statement. Uh, people should not take it in the wrong way. I, whenever I meet with people, uh, I tell them only one thing: just be prepared. If you get fired, you should get a job the very next day. Okay. Okay. Just have that in your mind all the time, right? Because nobody knows today. Alchemy is doing good. PayPal is doing good. Everything is doing good. and nobody leaves the organization people mostly leaves the manager right and we can put all of these things the reason for this <coughs> thought in their mind is not to scare them right? it's definitely not for them they have to be acute they have to know what is happening in the market what is the latest that if you are in a retail technology you need to understand what is happening in the retail what are the processes what are the competition or how is it is evolving and what are the other jargon that you should be aware of it. the whole thing you got to be aware of it right when they are to that level the confidence they will have is very high right. and they will never make mistakes correct correct, correct. once they have in that the confidence level goes up with the up north uh, north star then whatever they do comes with a very very strong intuition and they'll be very confident in the way they are having the conversation they may not be very good in language uh, yeah. communication but what they say becomes very strong i think that uh, initially people took it uh, offensive Uh, but but I told it is not offensive, right? right. Uh, the same thing applies to me also. I have to be abreast of what is happening around me. If okay. you are not taking care of yourself, don't expect anybody else to take care of you. Correct, correct. If you have a problem, come to me. I'll help you. If you need something, I'll come. I'll help you to coach. I'll help you to mentor. I'll provide you the right support system. Mm. But you don't expect me to tell you what is going to be your problem. Correct. Then see, it is purely personal, right? I can put all ten different initiatives. Yes. If they don't know what they wanted, then I cannot define their life. Sure. They need to know what. Then re- remaining everything, I will do. And we are a very family, like a people-centric organization. And in the recent past, uh, uh, when the COVID came, we were the first to go all work from home. We wow. gave the complete uh, uh, office setup for our people at wow. home. Like okay. table, chairs, and computers, everything at home, okay. and we paid internet free. And uh, for the COVID free vaccination, we sent a COVID kit every three months. We keep sending COVID kit, and we keep connecting. And it's all about the other side of it. Right? And people personally, they lost. They don't know people to talk to. And we created a group of people just to say hi to them, just chat with them, because they don't know what is next. So we created a whole support system around it. I think that people centric. With the right intention, uh, that's very key, right? People will see through uh, what is fake, uh, what is that you are pretending to be versus the actual uh, uh, internal aspect that comes out of you, right? They see through, and as a leader, that is that is very critical. And I I keep myself uh, uh, up to date, and I keep I, I'm all I will fight for my people and ensure what is right for the people. There will be an impact. These are the financial uh, the right investments, right? Uh, when you make the good investment or wrong investment these are must investment on people when you make an investment i think the returns you cannot calculate those returns it will be like exponential correct i, I think uh, that's that that thing uh, i'll close on that yes so i am so impressed about the fact that you know you give so much importance to people in investing in them and developing them and coaching them that's like really really awesome to note and thank you so much ranga it was amazing to have you on the show i'm sure our viewers uh, have so many things to you know think upon and reflect and see what is it that they can use in their walk of life or you know whatever that they are doing so it was awesome it was a privilege to hear you thank you so much for being on the fly high series thank you thank you sangeeta it was very happy and i hope it helps uh, thank you uh, fly viewers and hope you all stay safe and take care bye bye thank you bye